Hey everyone, in today's video, I have a fun one for you. I'm going to share 10 different skills you can use to play one of my favorite games. This game is called Find the Fish. Now, I love this game so much because of how versatile it is, and if for some crazy reason you've been following me from the beginning of my YouTube journey, then you might know that Find the Fish was actually the first game I ever shared here on YouTube. The video looks like this right here, and if you feel like watching a very embarrassing video of me, go ahead and watch that one. In that video, I actually share exactly how to play the game, but I'm gonna do a quick overview of that right now. This game is a great one because you can use it whole group, you can use it small group, and like I mentioned, it is super versatile. You can use it with so many different skills and carry it on throughout the year. So let me dive into which skills I like to use this game with, and let's get started. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. Let's go. All right, so the first skill you can use for Find the Fish is the original one that I started using when I played this game, and that is for simple number identification. So I'm gonna use this little pocket chart here to help explain things, but the way you would play this game is you can do this whole group or in small group, like I said, and you would simply have the numbers listed out here, one through 20, let's say. You could go all the way up to 100 if you wanted to, depending on how big your chart is or what you're trying to work on. But realistically, about 20 cards is a good place to start with your class. Then you will take a little fish that looks like this. I just printed out this from Clip Art. It's actually in my number sense unit. You can draw a fish. It can be very simple. And when the class is not looking, you would actually go ahead and hide this fish behind one of the numbers. Oh, you don't want to see it though. Obviously. Then all you would tell students is, hey, find the fish. So you could call students one by one. They would have to come up and point to a number and identify it. So they would say, I think the fish is behind number two. They would take the two, no fish. Number five, no fish. Number four, they found the fish. Now the game really is just that simple. So like I said, you could do this with your whole class. You could do it in a small group. What I next like to do is when we're really reviewing that skill, I like to make little tiny fish on a, on a piece of paper and I cut them up and students can either use flashcards, index cards, you can make your own little cards to give them and they can actually play this with a partner. So you don't even have to be there but with just two people, one student will close their eyes while the other hides the fish and the other one tries to find it and then they just take turns going back and forth. So now that you get the basic gist of the game, let me go over 10 skills I like to use when playing this game. The first we already did and that was number identification. The second skill I like to use with this game is missing numbers. So here you can see, I'll try to not get all the glare on there, but it will say three blank five blank 12, 13. You will just go ahead and create some cards with some missing numbers in there. And when students try to find the fish this time, they're actually going to say the number that is missing. The third skill I like to use is for addition. And here you can see, I actually have it two different ways. I like to sometimes just give them a basic addition equation 10 plus 4, 6 plus 1. If you're working on three add-ins, you could add some of those in there. But then I also like to have some sums here. And here, students would have to come up and say an equation that equals this sum in order to flip the card and see if they found the fish. So the third skill is addition. The fourth one, I'm not even going to do another, you know, set of very long and detailed cards that I created, but it would just be for subtraction and I would do the same exact thing. Either make a difference or make some subtraction equations or mix in both and students can find the fish. The fifth skill I like to use this game for is place value. And again, with my fancy cards here, I usually like to do this in a couple different ways. You can have drawings of, you know, base 10 blocks with some ones that have to count up what number this is. So 43 and 33, you could have expanded form. And then actually I didn't put it here, but you could also just have the number 79 and they would have to tell you how many tens and how many ones there are in order to find the fish. Again, a bunch of different ways to practice one skill. So just to recap, the first five skills were all math ones. We have number identification, missing numbers, addition, subtraction, and place value. Now, before I go into five literacy skills I like to use when I'm playing this game, I wanted to just share a couple other ways you can keep this fresh. So I, of course, call this find the fish because I use a fish, but you could also call this where's the whale, spot the star. 
or detect the dino. And of course, instead of a fish, you would have a whale, a star, and a dino that they are trying to find. And again, it's the same game, but it might be a little more interesting to them if they are looking for something new. And of course, I like a little alliteration, so I came up with those. But you could just keep calling it, you know, find the Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can call it whatever you want. Okay, let's quickly run through five literacy skills that you can also practice by playing Find the Fish. First that comes to mind is of course some letter ID or sound ID. So you could just have the letters here and students would have to simply say the letter to remove it or you might have them say the sound that the letter makes in order for them to remove it. Another literacy skill would be sight words. If you've had a list of words that your students are working on, you can throw them in here and they have to say the word before they can remove the card. The eighth skill I like to use with this game is rhyming words. And you can do this two different ways. Here I simply wrote out the word and I wrote mouse, cat, ship, and top. And students would have to produce a rhyming word. If your students are not able to read these words just yet or you're wanting to move past you know just cbc words you can easily just throw up pictures here and you would throw up a picture of a mouse a cat a ship and a top and they would have to produce a rhyme in order to go ahead and remove that card and see if they found the fish. Skill number nine would be simple decoding. Similar to the sight words, this would actually be a list of words with this specific phonics skill that you might be working on. Here, the example would be with SH. So it would write cash, shed, ship, and shop. And students would have to decode or read the word before they could lift it to see if they found the fish. And last but not least, the 10th skill that I like to use is phoneme isolation. And with this one, I would absolutely use images. Since students are looking at the picture and trying to identify that first phoneme or sound that they hear. Now here you have my wonderful drawings of a boat and a cat and I just took the fish. Again, I'm doing this quickly for examples. You can print out whatever works for you, but I just wanna show the versatility of this game. So here students would look at the cards and you would tell them they need to identify the initial sound or phoneme that they hear in the word. So they would say k for this one, b for this one, and f for this one. So there you have 10 fast and easy skills you can practice using the game Find the Fish or where's the whale, detect the dino, and spot the star. I truly love this game, and I said this earlier, but it's a great one to teach at the beginning of the year, just because it's so easy to build upon and keep playing throughout the rest of the year with different skills. So once you get students to understand this game, it's kind of limitless in terms of how many different ways you can play it. To quickly recap the 10 different skills I like to use when playing this game, we have it right here. Feel free to take a picture and pause this video. We have number sense, addition, subtraction, missing numbers, and place value for some math skills. And then for literacy, we have letter sound or letter names, rhyming, phoneme isolation, sight words, and decoding. Now, all those being said, I am sure there are many other ways you could use this game. In fact, if you have any skills that you think you could plug in to play Find the Fish, please list them down in the comment section. Maybe it's something you're thinking about doing with your students or just an idea that you had. It's always great to kind of brainstorm and think tank and get ideas from other teachers. So go ahead and list them down there and I will take a look. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.